matchup and a fired up zoo. You were trying to rile them up pregame. A little disappointed with the Oakland Zoo. They say it's the zoo against you. Well, let me tell you something. That you is going to be Wake Forest. They are a talented, skilled offensive team. Roger Ayers tosses it up. Federico, Federico wins the tap back to Nelly Cummings. Pitt in white at home. And up we go. We told you, Jerome Land in the building. He will be with us here later on this first half. Blake Henson off the shot fake. Driving on Andrew Carr. Kicks for Greg Elliott. Boy, he's got a good looking stroke. You get a paint touch, you collapse the defense. Elliott moves to an open area. He is a world class three point shooter. 40% from the three in ACC play. 23 year old Marquette transfer. You see his numbers for the season. And now Wake goes to work. Look out, Damari Monsanto doesn't get the roll. He's the best three point shooter in the ACC. And he is a volume three point shooter. Got it. He does a great job of relocating and being shot ready. Burton skips into the corner. Cummings backs it out for Henson. Cummings, he's been cold recently. Yeah, both of these teams play with really good spacing. Henson, he is always expressive. He connects. A couple early triples for Pitt. Yeah, I call him a floor gamer. He's a power forward with perimeter skills, can shoot the three, terrific rebounder with a big physical body. Matt Marsh. The England native missed the bunny at the rim. Yeah, Marsh is a good rim runner, and they, they're going to put him in a ton of ball screens because if you tag the roller, that opens up the three. Henson, deep one, wide right, and out of bounds belongs to Wake. Jeff Capel, he's got his team at 13 and 7 overall, 6 and 3 in the ACC. Joe Lenardi, right now, late January, he has them in. And uh, we were talking about the starting group. You, you've got dictionary definitions for all the guys Jeff Capel's got. Yeah, everyone plays like someone, but also like you know, Nelly Cummings, he's a ball guard. What is a ball guard? A ball guard's a guy that can facilitate and score. He's got to think facilitate first for Jamarius Burton. He's a ball guard, but he's a guy that thinks score first, but does have the ability to facilitate, averaging over four assists a game in ACC play. Like Henson, the floor, floor gamer, but this pick team, older, more mature, plays with great pace and great trust. Burton missed it in close. Cam Hildreth back down with it. The sophomore second leading scorer. He's got the only two for Wake. Monsanto good on his second attempt. 41%. He hit seven threes in the loss this weekend. And we're sitting in shoot around today. And Jeff Capel said we are not going to leave Monsanto. Arrive on the catch, make him put it on the floor. Really good execution by Wake Forest. Cummings can't answer. Andrew Carr the rebound. Nelly Cummings has got to let the game come to him. He's got to think, distribute first, and then after he gets others involved, the game will become easier for him. Gets involved defensively there. Steve Forbes, meanwhile, it's year three. He is talkative as ever. We tried to mic him up. He, he didn't buy that. We're still working on that for later on this season. And uh, definitions for his starting five as well. Yeah, when you look at this Wake Forest team, uh, you know, you're talking about a team that's young, a team that's developing, but Kyrie Appleby. He is a ball guard. And again, a, a ball guard is a scoring point guard, more of a facilitator. And then you've got Andrew Carr as the floor gamer at 6'10. He can put it on the floor, he can stretch defense. Uh, he's so versatile. And I think versatility for both of these teams, you're going to see both of these teams play four out with the court spread, a lot of middle ball screens, and then playing off of that penetration. Very similar in terms of the style of play for both. Ball screen defense and help defense will be key in this game. Marius Burton whistled for an offensive foul, so both teams trade one of those. The two guards we talked about right off the top, Appleby and Burton. Appleby lets fly, and he rains one down. Yeah, shooting about 36% from the three. Really good off DHOs, dribble handoffs and ball screens. And has a really good feel for the game. Second three for Blake Henson. He had four of them Saturday against Florida State. That's what makes him such a hard matchup, Mike, because you're talking about 6'7", big body, rebounds the ball, can beat you on the bounce up, and stretch the defense. I love Henson's game. Lava top tipped away by Federico. Burton off the bounce. Loves the mid-range too strong. We knew there would be three-point shooting in this one. It is not disappointing. Carno, Federico clears it. 
Both teams will look to push. Both teams will look to shoot the three in transition. Elliott. His second as well. Four triples for Pitt and a timeout Wake Forest. In transition, you've got to find Greg Elliott. Real simple class. Pitt has knocked down four threes already here at home against Wake. And for the Panthers, it is a much different shooting team from last year. Totally different shooting team. Uh, they play with greater spacing. They share the basketball. And they've got shot makers. But Steve Forbes is absolutely furious. Because you know, we sat in shoot around today. They talked about running Pitt off the three-point line, arriving on the catch, making guys put the ball on the floor. And the start of this game, defensive transition, bang, wide open three for Elliott. Paint touch, kick out, bang, three-point. Uh, Three-pointer for Henson. So, attention to detail. You go on the road, you got to do all the little things. Right now, the attention to detail for Wake Forest is not there. And the result, four threes for Pitt. To arrive on the catch, is that effort, or is it ball watching, or some combo of both? Well, it's, it's basically when the ball is passed, you got to move on the air time of the pass. So when the ball is in the air, so if you fall with your eyes, you're going to be late. And then it is basically it's effort. You got to have greater effort. Stop the ball, defensive transition, get matched up, know who you're guarding. You gotta run the floor with Elliott, or he's gonna bury threes all night. He's knocked down two, Blake Henson's got two. Nike Sabandi's into the game for Pitt off the bench, and Davian Williamson for Wake. Couple very good sixth men here in the ACC. Sabandi skips Elliott, his third already. And a great job. They created the mismatch with Marsh, obviously, on Sabandi, Sabandi gets a paint touch, puts the defense in rotation, which results in an easy three. And Hildreth answers with two at the cup. He is so physical and hard charging. Sophomore from England. He's like a power point guard, a guy that can back you down. He's got a little Villanova in his game. I can even think of that Jalen Brunson. Henson's third as well. And how about this start for Pitt? All of its points from deep. It is raining threes right now. You've got to close and now make the Pitt offensive players put the ball on the floor. What a great start for Pitt and Jeff Capel's squad. Carr, offensive foul. It's Henson who draws it. That's a scattered for a charge right there. Good job. Watch right here. Paint touch, kick out, step in, bang. What we're seeing right now, Mike, is a really unselfish pit team getting paint catches, moving the defense, and making the right play. You mentioned unselfish. You used this phrase with Jeff Capel today, like the ball having energy and moving it and sharing it. When the ball has energy, you get a good shot, good things happen. When the ball gets stuck, right, the result most times is a quick shot, a bad shot, a first side shot, and a contested shot. He felt like... Saturday against Florida State. They did that early on when they built a 10-point lead and then maybe didn't do it against Florida State switching defense. Yeah, what happened is Florida State switches everything on the perimeter and basically what was happening is Pitt was then seen a switch and instead of moving the ball one more time, getting reversed one more time, they got stuck, attacked the one-on-one -on -one, and really ended up taking a contested shot. Even though you have the switch, you can get the ball reversed. All right, you can make an extra pass, swing it one more time and move these guys. How about this drive right here? Here's Burton. What does he do? Gets in the paint. All right, attracts two. When you attract two, then what you're basically playing is four on three behind. Baseline out of bounds was drawn up with two on the timer, and Greg Elliott did not get it off in time, it appeared. They will go to the monitor and have a look at this. Jeff Capel's already pleading his case. It, it, there's a little negotiation going on. Most times, you know, I've negotiated with officials many times in my life. Most times you lose. It's not a, it's it's not like a court of law where you know you actually get a chance to challenge the decision, but uh, you know right now I look at Pitt. Everything that Pitt talked about. All right, here's the lob, short clock. Uh, that is no basket. Did not get it off. Didn't get it off in time. If these guys want to come over here, we can help them out. Roger Harris, he's we, always we, eager we, to we talk to you. He misses time. you. I mean, Brian misses me. I mean, you got obviously Roger Ayers, who I think is the best official in college basketball. Great communicator. Yeah. You had Roger Ayers on your game. 
All right? You knew the game was in good hands and you just focused on coaching the team. There were some other guys that, you know, you might say, I might need to help him a little bit. We get word, no bucket. You could have told him that. Could have saved us five minutes. Mike, what's your take on the start of this game? Pitt, shooting-wise, you'll take that every time. You don't think that six of eight from deep is going to be sustainable, but an excellent start. And what Jeff Cable said to his team at the end of shoot-around, we need 40 minutes of energy, because they got off to a great start Saturday as well. So what's the challenge for Pitt? I'm, I'm putting you in the coaching seat now. What's the challenge for Pitt? Focus oh, no, on getting stops. Yeah, getting stops, but I'll tell you what the other challenge for Pitt is. All right, you have the ball moving, it's got energy, you're knocking down shots, stay the course. Continue, how did you get here? You got here, and, and Coach Cable talked to us about this. You got here by being unselfish, making the extra pass, getting paint touches, and playing ahead of the defense. Stay the course. Got another pretty good look there for Elliott, who misses that time from deep. Wake's got it within six after that Marsh slam. And Marsh trying to haul in another one underneath to stay with the Deeks. This middle ball screen is a very big part of Wake Forest offense. Good job of Marsh coming to the rim. He's pretty good at making those dunks, by the way. I mean, you think about it, the number of field goals he's made and the number of dunks he's made, it's an incredible percentage. So he's now got 44 made buckets this year. 35 of them are dunks, and about half of those on alley -oops. Guillermo Diaz grambles, met at the rim, and Wake pushes in transition. Davian Williamson for Carr kept his footing and gets fouled by Henson. Uh, that you could call this high percentage. Yeah, this is a high Marsh. percentage. Yeah, you know, like you put him in position to play to his strength. So, you know, what's Marsh? What, what's his role out there? He's a middle ball screener, a slot ball screener, and a rim runner off of that. And why do you roll hard? You roll hard because if the defense tags that roll because someone's stepping out because, say, Ty Appleby is a 35 or 36 percent three-point shooter. If you tag that roll, you give up a three. If you don't tag the roll, he gets a dunk. So that's a big part of Wake Forest's offense. So you're saying look past six points per game, the, the value he provides and oftentimes opening up that skip pass. Yeah, he gets other guys' shots, kind of like what you do when you set me up. Hopefully successfully. Very successfully. <laughs> I told you, this is going to be the longest two hours of your life. <laughs> well, we powered up on pregame pierogies. Oh, pierogies. I haven't had pierogies since uh, I left here. Which was what? How long ago? We're not going to go there. Okay. Former Pitt I'm just saying coach. I'm very well preserved for my age. They <laughs> Santos, no, off the glass, and Hildreth the rebound. Wait, trying to make it a one-possession game. Hildreth attacking for that two. stopped the ball earlier, and Hildreth again using that big body. And, you know, we talked about the last two possessions, right? Good slip right there. Diaz Graham, the flush. Diaz Graham's minutes are up. Last five games, 11 minutes a game. Why? Because he has some length of protection at the rim. And he is a very good rim runner and a very good passer from the high post. So. Seven footer received from the Canary Islands. See, they're playing Hildreth as a driver. Good hard step out though, by him. Yes, Graham came over and Carr drills one from the wing. It's a one point game. Floor gamer. Bigger can step out and knock down the three. And here's the middle ball screen here. This is Burton at his pass. Great pass. Santos. Nate Santos, the sophomore from Geneva, Illinois, working the baseline. Yeah, really good job. What happens, come off that high ball screen, Burton gets a paint touch, Santos' defender turns his head. Easy scoring opportunity. It's really been important for Santos because he looks like he's ready to contribute, has struggled making shots. You see the ball go in, that's a positive. Hildreth. That's not his Way thing. Off target. That's not his thing. That's a settle right there. That's a win for the defense. Sabandi, too strong on a transition triple, and Hildreth the board. And that's a win for the defense. Shot fake, get a paint touch, get it reversed. This is Hildreth's game. Watch him back down. You, you think about watching Bone over play. Great pass. To Zach Keller, the freshman Ooh, getting some Zach run Keller. here in the first half. Early in the season, he's playing some. Very good defender. Can step out and shoot the three, another big body. I like the substitution to play against Grant Diaz because I think that's uh, a matchup that, that he can hold his ground for Keller. 
Good catch underneath by Diaz Graham. And he nearly got the roll as well. He will go to the line on the other side when we will have some royalty kind enough to join us. Jerome Lane being honored tonight just moments ago during this break and nice enough to stop by. Uh, cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to you and Raph. <laughs> I know one thing. This is Diet Coke. Raph is not <laughs> drinking Diet Coke after you're done. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. excellent. What's it like? Uh, 35 years it's been since that moment. Uh, just think, man. All accolades that I done here, and they just remember the dunk more than anything. <laughs> I mean, I'm serious. I don't even. Anybody know the two-time man, Amer All-America yeah. NBA, but that dunk. That was an iconic moment. What does Pitt mean to you, though? I mean, you, know, you came here and helped basically build this program to a national elite level. What does Pitt mean to you? Well, okay, I was the best robber on this team. So I have to give most of the praise to Charles Smith. I mean, he, he, he really took a lot of pressure on me for the rebounds because he, he demanded a double team. So Charles... I was his robber. The best robber he probably ever had in his life. No doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. How about that play? Sean Miller's playing right now, by the way. He's up 39-24 against UConn, so he's probably making a tribute to you today. By the way, his team's playing. But what do you remember most of like As that play was emerging, what, do, you, do you have any recollection of seeing the play, seeing a lane? What, what was your thought process? Your well, you got to think about it. I was up in the trying to rebound. And once Sean got the ball, I took off. Because I know you, Sean going to give you a pass if you're running. So I knew if I get out there, because Demetrius was ahead of me, so I could get up there, and he'd throw it to me. 32-minute delay. What would you do? Oh, at the halftime, they was trying to get me to come out, you know, run around the court, do some goofy <laughs> stuff. In game. At, you know, before the uh, start the game back yeah. up, I wouldn't do it unless they came out together. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Now, do you know what? That's then. Today, that would have been a great NIL opportunity. I can tell you <laughs> Well, you got to think about back then. You couldn't have did that. Anymore. You know, but these days, I probably ran up did the Superman. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Too small. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but back then, you couldn't do that. Guillermo Diaz Graham drops one in. Pits up by four midway through this first half as we visit with Jerome Lane being honored today. We've got the shirts on that were handed out to the first 1,000 students in the Oakland Zoo. The pint glasses. We had our toast here courtside at the peak. When you watch these guys play, what do you see? Like, you, you played on great teams. This is kind of a little bit of a renaissance. Well, of no, I can what do you see with these guys? Bruce, I can tell you this, man. The basketball I have seen before Canada took over. I, yeah, when they took over. Before then, we were so bad, I would turn on the TV at halftime. Now, at least we competitive. You know, we were very competitive. I, I would be in the games. You know what I'm saying? We, we got chances to win. That's all I'm asking for, compete. So I think he's on the right page. He's going up, you know what I'm saying, as far as getting the team to go. Just stay at an up peak. Coming short, he has Graham. Can't clean it up. Keller clears it for way. Kate, we're, we're talking about how people sometimes forget how great your career was. Some people might not know your journey and coming here as well, and then positional change, the, the thought of a transfer as well by a new coaching staff that came in. Talk the fans through that. Uh, well, my freshman year, you know, as most freshmen, hit a wall. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I hit that wall, and I was struggling to get out of it. And it was just a frustrating freshman year. And then Roy Chipman uh, quit, and then brought Paul Evans in. So Paul mm -hmm. Evans bring his bring his recruits in with Nate Bailey, Tico Cooper. I forget who else is with him. So now me and Demetrius got to go. Gore got to go to the second string, and we didn't start ever since we've been here. So by the end of by the end of uh, <laughs> end of two days of camp, we got a job. We got a job back quick. Now there was a young assistant coach back in the day. That's oh, yeah. had a pretty good career so far uh, since leaving Pitt, becoming a head coach. Yeah, our sophomore year, John Calipari came in. Without John, that team would have not gelled together because uh, Paul Evans, we didn't have no respect for him. I, 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 I might have said 20 words in two years to Paul. I mean, we just didn't get along. We just didn't see eye to eye. And, you know, he didn't see eye to eye with Demetrius. I mean, so, I mean, but if there's one thing in this world, I don't got to like you, but I can work with you. I'll tell you what, that team was really good. I mean, we talk about winning regular season Big East. 
which was big. That's Big East back in yeah. like the Big East. All caps. One through bottom. Every <laughs> game is tough. But you guys were, were that good. And you guys played differently because you guys played a lot of post-to-post -post basketball, right? Yeah, we played inside out. You know, we got to get the ball to Charles. <laughs> Everything worked through him. Ellie Cummings for three after an offensive rebound for Pitt. Up by four with less than seven to go in this first half. Appleby gets stripped by Sabandi. Out in transition through the contact that he's got free throws on the other side. Jerome, thank you so much. Hey, we I know appreciate you've been you answering a lot of questions you, about this today. Right, Thanks for yeah, it's by. been a long day today. Tell you what, but I, but I appreciate it, though. I appreciate it. I thank you. The byproduct of the quality of shot you get and how you get those shots. Pitt's doing a really good job of sharing the basketball, playing with spacing, playing inside out, playing off paint touches, and making the extra pass. Step and threes are good threes. You don't chase them, you let them come to you. And Pitt offensively has been absolutely terrific. They've yeah, only turned it over twice. You see these three guys connecting on those eight triples led by Hinson. Other side, Wake Forest has hung around. Zach Keller's been getting some run. Davian Williamson has knocked down some shots off the bench as well. They initially put up three points for his shot in that near side corner, and then they flipped it to a two after they went and looked at it during the break. Yeah, you talk about Williamson, he has been a starter at Wake Forest, uh, no longer starting, but a very big part of this team because you need guys that can come off the bench that can impact the game. And he impacts the game by coming off, bringing energy, and being a guy that can, can that can score it. So this game is, I think Wake Forest has settled into this game. So. Pitt adds to the lead. A couple of free throws from Nike Sabandi. And now Pitt extends some pressure after the made free throws. And this is used to basically make Wake use a little bit of clock. Now all of a sudden there's only 20 left on the clock. They're staying in the zone right here. Good ball movement. Get a paint touch, kick it out. Weak side offensive rebound from Marsh. Williamson shut off on the baseline. A cutting car goes into a spin on Henson. Can't get it to go. Just physical enough that hit defense to put a body on car. They're both of these teams really. Excellent passing teams, play with good spacing, share the basketball, but this dude is absolutely in flavor. Fifth three for Blake Henson. He's got 15. And he becomes a match-up nightmare if he shoots it like this because he's got that big body. He can put it on the floor. I mean, this has been really impressive. And he had great energy in the shooter out today. Appleby answers at the rim with two. You know, coming off a loss, a disappointing loss, Coach Capel talked to his team about kind of what they learned. And then he had opinions on what they learned. And I think that they understand energy, 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 compete, 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 and then share the basketball. Share the basketball, and that's exactly what these guys are doing right now. Well, how about this? They got 13 assists on 14 makes here in the first half. The ball's not getting stuck. The best teams make one more. The best teams, the ball doesn't get stuck. The best teams offensively play for each other and defensively are connected. No good. Bills out to Appleby. Doesn't get the roll. Federico, another rebound. Sabandi pulls up. Can't knock it down. Long rebound to Carr. Williamson pushes. Maybe and Williamson one on three. No. Mike, you know, in this pick team, they play like an older team because they are an older team. And they got guys that have played in the NCAA tournament. So when you're trying to get fixed, when you've struggled for a couple of years, it's not just going into the portal. It's finding the right guys, the guys that fit identity, fit culture, and understand what it takes to be successful. Winning players, and that's what they've done. Paint touch, kick out, good replaced by Henson right there. Nice job of relocating off penetration. And then Williamson, he, he's just got to choose me. Appleby has just a good way to change speeds, change direction, move different ways to finish. Henson took that heat check three. He almost spun down a sixth. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. And, uh, he took a heat check three, but Jeff Capel was not happy with the three again. 
how did he get to three? He chased that. He doesn't have to chase shots the way they're moving the basketball. Like, dude, just play for each other. You play for each other, good stuff's going to happen. Hey, you were talking about the ages. Uh, how's that for a veteran group? Five of your top six in the rotation? Five of your top six and high character guys, tough guys, winning guys, guys that trust each other and enjoy each other. They say it was last touch by Andrew Carr. Over 90% of the points come from juniors and seniors. Uh, the thing that impresses me about what Jeff Cape has been able to do, he's taken an L.A. Conference who came from Colgate and Bowling Green. He's taken a Greg Elliott who's played, played at Marquette. He's taken a Blake Hinson, and he's got them to trust each other and play together. Jorge Diaz Graham, one of the twin brothers, draws a foul on Ty Appleby. Pitt leads by 10 with under four to go in the first half at the peak. Through the transfer portal, if you look what Pitt's been able to do, 93% of the points are juniors and seniors, but 89% of those points, they have went out and got the right guys in the transfer portal, winning players, guys that would buy in to trust each other, play together, and play winning basketball. But it's not just Pitt. If you look around the landscape of college basketball, whether it's Missouri rebuilt in the SEC, if you look at Kansas State in the Big 12, if you look at Alabama, Mark Sears, the transfer from Ohio University, you look at around the college basketball, there are teams, Virginia, Ben Vanderplies. You know, you look around college basketball and transfers and the transfer portal is having a tremendous impact. But it's not just collecting talent, Mike. It's getting right guys that fit your identity, fit your culture, and want to buy into being winning players. Nellie Cummings has been that in his career at Colgate. Comes home to Pitt. He buries right there what is the 10th made three for Pitt this half. Yeah, and Nelly comes playing really well today. He, he hit kind of a, a wall a little bit because he put a little pressure on himself coming home because he's, it's so important for, to represent this university. But uh, he's playing at a high level. I'm sad that we haven't said his name in a while. There is one. That's his second three. The fifth for Wake Forest, who, remember, they just saw Virginia. Virginia hit 15 3 Saturday. And we told you, Pitt has 10 here in the first half. Yeah, and this will be an interesting halftime conversation that Steve Forbes. He won't be as uh, funny as he was when he sat down with him today during shooting. I can tell you that. No, very different and uh, not as quotable. Not as well. He'll be quotable, but it's nothing we can say on television. Offensive foul is called on Damari Monsanto. And that is two on Monsanto. And Damari Monsanto, he's, a, he's an elite three-point shooter, a volume three-point shooter, a little step back right there, but he is a right-hand rhythm dribbler. And you see right there, right hand, boom. And there's your charge. Monsanto, really, he gets into all his shots with a little step back or step ins, but if he's going to put the ball on the floor, it's going to be with his right hand. Scouting report charge. Dangerous spot here for Wade. Down 10, needing a stop. Cummings gets it to go. And how about his bounce back? Eight points, five assists. Yeah, eight points and a great job of navigating that ball screen, getting to a soft spot, knocking it down. When Nelly Cummings is playing at a good pace, when Nelly Cummings is reading the defense and taking what the defense gives him, you're talking about a guy that led Colgate to the NCAA tournament. A guy that understands winning basketball and has great pride in being here at Pitt and putting on that jersey. He's got the ball up a dozen off the Monsanto miss. Elliott's got a real nice shot big. And now Jorge Diaz Graham is tripped. Got a foul. Kelly Cummings, really good job right there. A little snake on that ball screen because Wake Forest is in drop coverage. What does that mean? That means they're basically trying to protect the basket until the defender gets over the top of that screen. He reads it, cuts it back. Great decision by Nelly Cummings. How about what Jeff Capel told us at shoot around today? They came back from New York earlier in the season, and Jeff asked Nelly if he was feeling pressure playing now for his hometown team. Cummings said no. And then he thought about it again, and he said, yeah, I mean, I remember the great teams here. And he said, and we quote, I feel like there's blood on my hands if I don't get us back. And there's his dad, who a, was a good player. And he, here, here's the situation for Nelly Cummings, is that, that having pride in where you're playing, putting on that jersey, is, is great. I do have concerns just across the landscape of college basketball. But these young players are under a microscope. Mm. And there is so much static around them. 
uh, whether it's by their peers, social media, unrealistic expectation, wanting to perform well so badly that instead of just playing and enjoying the moment and having both feet on the ground, that they kind of get ahead of themselves. And it's really good to see Nelly Cummings play at this level today uh, and enjoy basically the journey in the process here at Pitt. That's what Jeff Cable said to him. Man, we're just playing basketball. No doubt his head coach happy to see him performing this way in the first half. Ed Forrest is guarding absolutely. I mean, Pitt's making plays, but they've really done a poor job of guarding the ball. And it'll stay with Wake Forest, according to Roger Ayers' last touch, he says, by Federico. Let me ask you something right here. Let's look at this play right here. Quiz number two for you, Mike. Please. Does Wake Forest look like a young basketball team and Pitt look like a physically mature, experienced basketball team? I think that's a leading question a little bit. Well, I'm trying to help you. I didn't know you were paying attention to the intruder. It is a young Wake team as Appleby gets fouled. He's one of the veterans. They got a lot of pieces who are going to be returning next season. I mean, if you look at this team, Bradford is a sophomore. Obviously, Carr is going to have two years. Monsanto has two years. Hildreth has three years. I mean, this is a young, developing basketball team. Appleby to the line. Hey, Saturdays are for basketball here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. This weekend, a quadruple header starts at 1 Eastern. NC State Wake, then Duke Georgia Tech, followed by number 24 Clemson. Battles Florida State capped off with Syracuse and the Virginia Tech back in the win column on the Schneider. Huge win right there for Virginia Tech at home. You don't just roll with the Castle Coliseum and get an easy W. That was a great win. Hunter Couture was absolutely terrific. And you know, Wake Forest, they, they've got NC State next. NC State, huge win because they could not afford to lose that game through Notre Dame. You can't afford a bad loss this time of the year. But you've got a great slate of games on the ACC Network. You're talking about games that will have impacts on NCAA tournament opportunities and building resumes. Terrific, four terrific games right there. Mikey Sabandi went up with Jerome Lane-like intentions. Right-hand driver, that's scouting report. You've got to know Sabandi first and foremost is going to rip it and go, woo. He did have it. Really, uh, I think he was trying to, I was going to say a poster, but it, it's an NFT now, right? <laughs> you, uh, you were big on social media. Oh, yeah. We yeah. covered Twitter and Instagram pregame. Yes, we, uh, we tried. Sometimes uh, I don't spell as well as I need to, and my daughters give me a hard time, but we try to be positive. Be careful before you hit send. Huh? So Bandy's got a half dozen pit by 15 inside the final minute no of this first half. No two three zone, changing defenses. Car flashes. And Car finishes. And he's got a chance at a much needed three point play for Wake. That's a good job going two for one right there for Wake Forest. Uh, Carr with a good job catching it in the middle of that zone. Pitt changes defenses. Good recognition by Wake Forest. Carr presents himself. Everyone says you got to get a guy in the middle of the zone. You know what you do? You have to get a guy in the middle of the zone to an open area. That open area is usually by that ACC logo, but you've got to seek that open pocket. That's where Carr went. He stamps the three-point play. He's got eight. Leading the Deeks along with Cam Hildreth and Wake's within a dozen and looking for a stop here. And Wake Capel will take that use it or lose it. And Wake just came back in a little 1 3 1. We'll take a 30 second break and then right back to Pittsburgh. For Pitt, they've got 49 with the basketball and still a half minute until the intermission. What are you seeing from Wake defensively? Well, they just switched to a little 1-3-1 one, one zone. I'm interested to see if they stay in that defense coming out of the timeout. Uh, it's a 1-3-1 one, one lane zone. It's actually a, a, an old defense that Dr. Roy Chipman played when he was at Pitt and Sam Clancy played at Pitt. So right now they're showing a 1-3-1. One, one. He'll put a big at the top. He's going to try to distort passing lanes on that guard-to-guard -guard pass. All right, then you see the wings are going to try to push the ball out. They might, might try to get a trap. The key to this thing is coming back and rebounding the basketball. You got Appleby on the left-hand side. You see the floor. 
All right, if it is shot, he's got to come back and help rebound. Good job of creating the turnover. Clancy-like pick from Hildreth, who pushes and finds Carr. He is fouled by Diaz Graham and Andrew Carr with a chance at a second three-point play. Great job in 1-3-1. Good job on the weak side. If you look at the right side of your screen, watch when this ball reverses. Watch Hildreth on the right-hand side. He's going to read the passer's eyes. Good steal. But I got okay, well, hold on a second here. We, we, I'm not letting you get away with that. You just compare Ken Hildreth to Sam Clancy. Pit royalty. Sam Bam Clancy. We called him Superman. Did he not play that spot in the zone? He did, but he can wait at the top of the circle and still take that diagonal pass away. Sam Clancy and Hildreth in the same sentence. That'll be the last time that's ever mentioned. And who knows what we have in store in who the knows? second that's half. That's why you got to stick around. Pit by 10 <laughs> at the break on the strength of 10 threes. Heems in the top six in the ACC. It's pit up 10 at the break as we welcome you back to the Pete. Seth Greenberg, Mike Monica with you, and Pitt. We told you 10 three-pointers in that first half, and they were cruising. Mike, we talked to Jeff Capel prior to the game. And he talked about having the ball, having energy, making the extra pass, playing for each other, getting paint touches, getting the ball reversed. Step in threes are good threes, paint touch, kick out, step in three, bam. Elliott knocks down the three. Roll, replace, bring Hinson behind the play, bam, three pointer. Get it into the blue area, to the paint, make an extra pass, be shot ready. It starts with your feet, be behind the basketball. All of these threes are a byproduct of sharing the basketball, and they're all assisted threes. On the other side, Andrew Carr, at the end of the first half, he got involved, knocked down a three from the baseline, then got in the middle of that zone when Pitt went zone, found an open spot, a tap, and then running the floor. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see Carr play some five, because the most important thing that Wake Forest needs to do to get back in this game is they must get stops. To get stops, you must defend the basketball and keep it out of the lane and do a better job in defensive transition. Won't be surprised. They'll start big, but Wake Forest might have to come back and go a little bit smaller with Carr at five. Yeah, they've done some more of that recently. Some of the notes from this first half. Damari Monsanto had three first half fouls, two of them on offensive fouls, and his last two fouls he picked up in the final three minutes of the half. So that bears monitoring as well. He is out there for Steve Forbes to begin this half. Yeah, two offensive fouls, a really good scouting report chart is what I mean by that. In the scouting reports can say he's shot faking, one or two dribbles right. If he's going to try to beat you up the dribble, he's going right. Really good job. Greg Elliott starts on Monsanto to begin the second half as they skip it for him. And he lets fly. Long rebound caroms out toward Hildreth. Elliott goes diving for it. A held ball, and the arrow points to Pitt. And that was good ball movement right there for Wake Forest. The kick out to Monsanto, it's almost like, you know, you live by the three, you die by the three. That's who he is, but that was a great contest by Pitt, running out and contesting that three. He jacked up 15 threes on Saturday, the most by any ACC player in a game this season. Burton he had a couple of fouls, so only two points for Jamarius Burton in the first half. But he's been pacing, Mike. You know, he's not chasing anything. Appleby goes slicing, kept his pivot foot, but missed the shot. Like the push by Appleby, spacing off the push. Guy's got to do a better job of sliding to open areas. Shows in for Appleby in the first half on an average of 18. That's Elliott for three. Right, 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 right now, Steve Forbes is taking someone out. That is absolutely unacceptable. If you're coaching Wake Forest and you're guarding Greg Elliott, he can't catch just guard the forward pass, step behind it, no pressure, no contest, wide open three. I mean, that's just KYP, right, with someone like him who can shoot it that well? 100%. I mean, you've got to make him shot fake, close him to a shot fake, and make him put it on the floor. Great passing once again by Pitt, finding the open man. Shot clock at five for Appleby, tipped away by Elliott with three to shoot for Wake. Pitt sharing the basketball, playing with good spacing. Watch right here. A little pin down, and look, that's just a lack of communication right there. That is just a soft screen, no communication, wide open three. Elliott and Henson have combined for nine of Pitt's 11 made threes. 
Appleby Hoist. Can't hit. You know, Pitts changed their defensive kind of philosophy. You know, in years past, Pitts really extended their defense out, uh, tried to deny ball reversal, pressure the ball a little further out. What they've done now is because of the way the game is officiated, because you don't want to put your opponent in the bonus, they're basically heels to the three-point line, trying to keep the ball in front, force a contested shot, and limit their opponent to one shot. They've done a really good job of that. Coming, he's trying to carve out space, and Appleby swiped him. Appleby bounces to Monsanto. Really good pass right there. Appleby puts his eyes on the rim. You put your eyes on the rim, you see the whole floor drops to die. Change to the little 1 3 1 again. They got a steal on this at the end of the first half. Elliott off the mark. Yeah, last five games coming in, Wake has gone to that 1 3 1 10% of the time, using it more than they had to start the season for Steve Forbes. A couple of extra passes to Hildred for three. Good extra pass, good better pass. Give up a good shot to get a better shot to get the best shot. Back to the 1 3 1. Looks like. Monsanto tweaked his knee a little bit. That's not good. Elliott doesn't miss this one. Hey, he played a 1-3-1. One, one. I'm not sure who's on the baseline there. I, th I thought it was Monsanto who looked like he twisted his knee a little bit. But when that ball goes to the corner, that baseline guy's got to get out to the corner. Can't trade three. He's got to get stops. See the physicality of the uh, hits. You see what the point pick up. You see everyone's basically towing the three-point line. Not as far out as they have. Not been as in the far past. out. Pass, they've been out. What, what happens is if the boy you get stretched out, watch right here. Great pass by Appleby. Terrific job, Monsanto. Watch when he lands. We'll, we'll try to find where perhaps he came up lame. Hildreth working on Barton. Force one in there to Marsh. Commits the foul with three left on the shot clock from Matt Marsh. Let's look at this for Damari Monsanto on the rebounding action here. Because you spotted it, he came up the floor grimacing and then had to come out of the game. He had signaled to the bench as well, saw him receiving medical attention. Yeah, he didn't even make a play on that pass to the corner whatsoever. Blake Forrest, very good at underneath that bounds plays. There it is. Case in point. Case in Ladies and gentlemen, they call that forecasting or going to shoot around. <laughs> A lot of hours logged on synergy. And that can make the difference, right, at this time of the year. Steal a basket. You know, this time of the year, in league play, can't guard the ball. But in league play, you can play close games. And in close games, you got to steal baskets. And that's underneath the side, dead ball, and out of timeouts. The dunking Deke. Matt Marsh with back-to-back -back oh, flushes. Oh, the dunking Deke. He might get an NIB look. You know? The dunking Deke goes to Duncan for that, two. That's all he does. Yeah, wait within nine. You want to negotiate that deal for him? Uh, yeah, if I get a cut. Tipped around, and Williamson snatches pass. it. There's a drive. He's going to try to get in here. Carr does just that. Shut off by Hinson. And now Appleby at the controls. Hinson gets switched on to him. Appleby on the baseline. And Hey, when we come back, this is a meeting of the minds if I've ever seen one. Doesn't get any better than this. This is real stimulating. Forbes sat down with Seth. We're going to go a little coach to coach with Coach Steve Forbes. Last time you shaved your dome. Uh, this morning, just for you. Well, I would have waited before the game, but um, I did it for you because you're the king of Chrome. Have you rolled into the Joel on the motorcycle? Uh, I, I have sat on the motorcycle. No, no, I know. I, 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 well, anyone I can sit on a motorcycle. I, have you gotten no. back on the back of the thing, like well, flipped got, it up? They wanted and... me to drive it out for college game day during COVID on the football field, but I thought I'd run over Herb Street, and then I didn't want to get in trouble for that. I would have liked for you to have been coaching in the ACC. Then I, I would have rode it out, backed it up, and pointed the exhaust right at you. I can, uh, that's like Brad Brownell wearing the, you know, every time we played at Clemson, he would break out the, either the purple or the orange jacket. Like, he was supposed to be my boy, and he'd break out the purple or orange jacket. I had no shot when that jacket came out. When I think of fashion plates. You should think of me. 
I think it's Steve Forbes. Yeah, really. Coach to coach with Steve Forbes. You know, everyone's got their thing. Uh, Steve Forbes has the vest when it comes to fashion. It's, it's not only that, but he, here's the deal. He has the quarter zip and the vest. And there's a young Steve Forbes. He was fighting a fight back then. You see, he had a little, a little bit on the dome. Then he gave into the fight. Okay. What an amazing job he did in Northwest Florida. An even more amazing job at East Tennessee dominating that conference. He is not a good coach. He's a great communicator. A terrific teacher uh, really cares about his players and there that, that last picture right there you could see Steve you know at that age just give up all right clean it up he, he made the move we had him on bald men on campus on the ACC network yep. it's every single Friday we'll, we actually will have Jay Billis with us this Friday oh. from Knoxville Tennessee game day is going to Knoxville the women are having game day on Knoxville on tomorrow on Thursday and then we have our game day on Saturday. And then we're getting on a bus and we're driving to Lexington, Kentucky for the Kentucky-Kansas game. Kentucky obviously have won four in a row and Kansas struggling a little bit right now with three consecutive losses. Big 12 is a brutal conference. It really is. We have seen that, especially over these last couple of weeks. One for one again. Watch, watch in the baseline. Hits it. Wanted another. Got a rebound. Got five That's of the them already. Thing. Carr does that. Uh, I'll tell you what, so. it's a seven-point game right now. Like Wake has settled in and kind of done a better job, getting a couple stops, quality shots improving. Hildreth with an in-between, and then he tumbles. He took an awkward fall. He is down in a lot of pain. Monsanto's already on the bench, and Hildreth is hobbled. They cannot afford that. Well, Jamarius Burton had limped off as well. Remember, he's been battling the knee issue all year. Monsanto comes back in. This is Burton defending. Burton and Hildreth both on the same play. Oh, here it is. And then this step as he comes back up the court. Look at this. Ooh. I don't like that. I don't like the look of that, but we'll see. Maybe we can uh, get some information. Being tended to right now on the Wake Forest bench, top of your screen. It was good to see Monsanto is able to return for Wake down seven. Sabandi tagged with a foul. If you notice right now, Wake Forest is not settling. Right now, they're paint touch, paint touch, paint touch. Attack, attack, attack. One, they want to get to the bonus, and two, if they can move the defense a little bit, They'll be up to free themselves up for some shots. Here's another underneath special situation. Monsanto spinning underneath on Federico. Elliott and Federico sandwich him, and it's Elliott who gets tagged with his second foul. Steve Forbes does an absolutely incredible. Look at the left hand side. It's a little late into the play, but the left side of your screen. Someone curled off of him, then he curled, Monsanto curled off the, the curler and, and got an opportunity to score it. He is a master. I call him, he's part, he's part of the uh, Iowa Coaches Mafia. Uh, one of his mentors, Nick Nurse, who actually helped him recruit Cameron Hildreth, whose dad played for Nick Nurse mm. in England and also coached with Nick Nurse when Nick was coaching overseas. The Brighton Bears. I know you followed them back in the day. Who does? Did you have a Brighton Bear baseball hat? Yes, and a pennant on my wall. It's always a good thing. Back to the one through one Watch it. Right at the restricted area. You see number four, Williamson. He's got to get out to those corners. Good cut right there. Pass was a little hot to handle for Federico from Cummings, who's now got it up top with 10 to shoot. You see Monsanto on the right-hand side. He's got to push that ball out. He can't let the ball get in the paint so easy. Cummings too strong, and then a push off on the rebounding action. And they get to Mari Monsanto, and that's his fourth with 14 minutes to go. And Cam Hildreth hobbles on up to the scorer's table to replace him. Yeah, this game, he's like a hockey player. Gets banged around, just comes right back in. I mean, uh, he's got a little toughness to him. Good execution right there. Gets it short off the screen. We know anything about Cam Hildreth, he is tough. He did this in the win at the Joel against Duke back in December. Just fought his way back into the game when he had a wrist injury. 
Appleby now. Ball never got reversed. Both, both of these teams right now, like Pitt, he, they got to get a ball reversal. They got to get a ball reversal and a paint touch. This could be a middle ball screen eventually. Savandi pulls up instead and knocks it down. Savandi going to his right hand is hard to guard. Hard to guard when he gets to his right hand. You talking about, you look at his pit team, whether it's Elliott, whether it's Sabandi, whether it's Cummings, whether it's Burton. I mean, if you look at the numbers, their career numbers combined, it's absolutely mind-boggling in terms of the number of games they've played, the number of points they've scored. Uh, tough, experienced team. And I'll tell you one thing, Wake Forest sticking in that 1-3-1. Do you like it? I do. The flexion here on Cummings after Williamson knocked down a three to cut it to five. Sabandi getting to his right hand, attacking the guy that rolled his ankle. A little step back. And then watch right there, a little skip pass. Late tag. Big time three right there. What you see in that play, did you see the spacing, how on dribble penetration, if they help on the roller, that's what we were talking about before. If you use that ball screen and they roll and they help on the roller, that skip pass is available. That's it, you see right there. Good job right there, Apple be pushing it out. See Hildreth getting matched up. We, we can see that play again. Instead of leaving Elliott in the corner, because Elliott was behind him, Hildreth kind of matched up with Elliott in the right-hand side of the corner. Learning from that breakdown that exactly. began this half. Yeah. Five-point margin, still a long way to go here in Pittsburgh in a crucial game. The car poked it away, and Appleby with the flush. Pitt needs a timeout right here. It was once a 15-point Pitt lead, and Wake's got it down to three. And multiple turnovers getting pushed out out of rhythm. They're trying to split this trap up top. That's a walk. Guillermo Diaz Graham back out for Sabandi. Cummings knocks it down. Better ball reversal. Good job Cummings stepping into that. The 1 3 1, because they're, they're, they're basically making that guard to guard pass difficult and the guard to forward pass difficult, it basically creates indecision. That was better. Dribble penetration for a purpose of getting someone else's shot. Cummings with three threes. Pitt has 13 of them now. 13 for 27 from long range. Davion Bradford, the Kansas State transfer, backing down in the post. I love it when Wake Forest gets paint touches, whether the dribble at a post up. Bradford, that's a big body dude right there. He can carve out space. Sabandi, and it's a fourth pit turnover this half with Wake Forest on the move. They've got it down to four. Great offense out of your defense. Get deflections and get out in transition. There's the deflection. Appleby pushes it. All of a sudden, we got a little basketball game. Bam! His left foot with Roger Ayers, the official. Right there, lower left-hand side of your screen. Watch what happens right there. He rolls it. Ah! Ah! Mm, rolls his ankle. Guy's got some toughness stuff. Armand Santo had been hobbled. He came back in. He is sitting with four fouls. We've got 11 to go in a four-point game, and Carr at the rim makes it a two-point mark. Out of a timeout. We talked about special situations. What is special situations for basketball? Underneath out of bounds, side out of bounds. ATOs after timeouts, first play of the game, first play of the half. Steve Forbes doing a masterful job coming out of timeouts. Said to be today, league play, you've got to find ways to steal buckets like that. Burton kicks. Sabandi hits. I love the patience that Burton's playing with. He could have tried to force that through the defense. Eyes on the rim, sucks the defense in. Sabandi gets to a window, shows his hand, steps in, great, steps in, great footwork. The 14th made three for Pitt. Damian Williamson trying to drive on Henson. Now six to shoot for Williamson. Shut off again by Henson. So Williamson jacks and comes up short. Henson got a piece of it. 
That was a really good job by Henson. Big body, moving his feet, keeping the ball in front, and compressing. Patience again from Burton. Off to Savandi. That's like me trying to interrupt you. That shot fake is so good. That's sometimes when I think you're going to talk, but you're not talking. That doesn't happen. Savandi short. We've got a foul away from the ball as well. Special situations, ATO. You're going to look on the left-hand side of your screen. You're going to see a little up screen. Good up screen right there. And Carr really does a good job of reading that Burton. Gets in the paint. You put the eyes on the rim to shrink the defense. Really good job of Savani moving to an open spot. Dribble penetration. you got to get in a window to be a receiver. Great job right there by Savani. What a, what a benefit to be able to bring a guy like Sabani off the bench with all that experience. You know, 2,000 career points scored. I mean, Burton okay. makes it a seven-point lead now. Picking his spots. What is he? Downhill driver. Doesn't settle. Physical driver. You use that word physical right off the top. As physical a guard as you will find. Bradford on the face up, going to work on the freshman Diaz Graham into a double off the window. So big, so physical, overpowering in the post. But if, if that's the deal, then you got to run a double at him and get the ball out of his hands. Back to the 1 3 1. Good pass, quick shot. That's a win for the 13 for the 1 3 1 defense. Oh, great change of speed. Oh, man. Tyree Appleby, are you kidding? You know what the kids would say? He went into his bag. <laughs> that dude, talk about change of speeds and change of direction. Goodness gracious. That was one of those whoop. Chris Berman would be all over that one now. I mean, that was whoop, whoop. Talk about change. Great players change speed and change direction. Watch this right here. Change speed, boom, change direction. The ACC this season. And you've seen a pretty incredible transformation from him just even since transferring in from last year at Florida. Yeah, I think he's been selectively aggressive. And Steve Forbes has given him the ball. He's given that responsibility. He's empowered him. Edwards, when he played at Purdue, that's exactly what Matt Painter used to talk to him. Like, hey, I'm giving you the ball. I want you to be aggressive. I want you to be you, but you've got to also be selectively aggressive, make good decisions. And that's exactly what Tyree Apple is doing, and that's what how Steve Forbes has empowered him. We talked with Appleby after shoot around today, and we asked him how the year has gone. He said, you know, a ton of expectations. As Henson knocks down another three. Coming into this season and joining this program, and he said, I still feel like we're not getting the respect we deserve. Well, you know, you do that one game at a time. You do that by being consistent. Anyone can do do something once. The very, very best are basically the guys that do it each and every night. And that's what's happening at Pitt. They've got four road wins. I mean, they're four and one on the road in the ACC. That is big time. That last possession, Burton gets a paint touch. Hinson comes behind. He is just feeling it. Oh, he's got another. That's his seventh. Now they're going to get a stop. they got to keep the ball out of the lane. 34 points in the paint for Wake Forest. 15 off turnovers. That's what's keeping them in this game. they got to keep the ball out of the paint pit. And they got to take care of the basketball at the other end. Elder probing through Henson. Now Burton back out for Williamson. He's knocked down three triples. Fires up another and hits. Damian Williamson with an answer. Hey, Mike, there's some shot making going on in this game. I'll Woo. tell you one thing. Short clock, early in the clock. Guys making big time shots. Really good closeout right there on Savannah. Blake Henson is feeling a big, seeing a big basket right here. Watch him, middle of the floor, Burton gets a touch. Then you see Hickson just relocating to an open spot. And this one, ball goes to the corner, late closeout. He gets behind the ball, great footwork. Knocks down another three. He's been terrific. Huge game for both these teams. For Wake Forest, the opportunity for a second quad one win for Pitt here at home. A chance at a quad two win. And boy, did Blake Hinson come to play.
He's been absolutely terrific. All 12 shot attempts from the three-point line, seven for 12, shot ready, hasn't chased it. It's come in the flow of the offense. And most of those threes have come off dribble penetration and kickouts. Really nice job of Pitt finding them, spacing it, and making the right play. You know, like Blake Hinson, he reminds me of a, another former great Pitt player. Clyde Vaughn, first guy actually recruited to come play at Pitt. Really? He was led Pitt to two NCAA tournaments, his most valuable player in well, basically was the Eastern Eight back then. Uh, absolutely a mountain masquerading as a man. A front court player that can rebound the ball, an elite rebounder, a big time shooter. Got it, led Pitt to three big, huge games in the Big East against St. John's. Georgetown and Syracuse. That's Chris Mullen, Leo Routens, and Patrick Ewing over about a two week span. And he's in a little bit of battle against cancer. He is the toughest person I know. There's no doubt in my mind the way he carries himself and what he's all about. He's going to win this thing. But Coach Vaughn, we're thinking about you. We appreciate you. And a big part of Pitt's success moving forward after you left was because of the foundation you helped lay. Guy Amen needs to, to be in the Hall of Fame. Appleby misses at the rim after Hildreth had missed a reverse. Appleby can't connect out of the corner, wanted to tie it. Under six to go here at the peak. Wake back a little man to man right now. They've got to contain the basketball, especially in these ball screen situations. They're switching that now. Coming's off the bounce, looking for somewhere to go. Finds Burton. Burton, offensive foul, pushed off on Hildreth. So they have been in a lot of zone. Now they go man and they get a stop. Yeah, watch on the right hand side of your screen. Uh, you saw Greg Elliott. They they were not allowing him to catch the ball, which forced Burton to put it down. Great job of staying between the ball and the basket. You can be moving. You just can't step up to take that charge. Good solid defensive possession right there by Wake Forest. Heldrick was left alone. Hits, and it's a one point game. Pitt having a hard time right now with that ball screen. That dribble handoff to the spread ball screen with the five. You've got to be up on that ball screen a little bit higher. You give Hildreth the chance to turn it, he's going to create some separation. Back to the 1 3 1. Federico's pass slipped away from Burton. And now Hildreth in transition on a Euro gets it to go. They say it's an offensive foul instead on Cam Hildreth. And Steve Forbes can't believe it. Let's take a look at this again. Creamy, the turnover off the 1 3 1. Ooh, that is close. See, in my opinion, he stepped up into that. He, he, you can move if you've established position, but you can't step up into the offensive player. That's a hard call. It's a bang-bang call. Back to the 1-3-1. They're getting a lot of deflections. Think about Pitt. 34 points. In, oh, excuse me. Uh, wait, 34 points in the paint. 15 points off turnovers. A lot off of that 1-3-1. One, one. And that's like a turnover. A quick shot without getting the ball reversed or getting a paint touch or the ball to the middle of the floor. Underneath Carr. Had to gather, and then he draws a foul on Hinson. Three on Hinson. Really good pass off the dribble. Obviously, Carr struggled with the catch. Great decision by Hildreth. Hildreth is really a crafty, experienced player from interna with international experience. Hey, Saturdays, they're for college basketball here on ACCN and the app this week. A quadruple header starts Ooh. at 1 Eastern. NC State Wake, yeah, and then Duke Georgia Tech. Clemson, Florida State, and it wraps up with Syracuse in Blacksburg. And how about Clemson? How about Hunter Tyson? How about P.J. Hall? How about that team being so connected and so tough? They have been fabulous. Elliott gives the lead right back to Pitt. And what do they do? They screen the top of the zone, which gets a paint touch, which forces the defense to shrink. And Elliott slides right into the open spot. That's really good execution. Great job by Coach Capel. Wake had not led since 8.32 left first half. Grabbed the lead. And then Pitt snatches it right back. 
Tough catch for Marsh, and he missed it with the left hand. Marsh got to be much more patient there. Patient. If the defense collapses and you feel the pressure, kick it out. That's a great opportunity for a step and three man to man right here for Wake Forest. Notice Burton. Kicks out. Hits it. Oh, it's another! Blake Henson is human fire tonight. Great job of getting a paint touch right here. Burton knocks down that jumper, and the next play, it comes that little string music. I guess that's string music. What do you think he's playing? We're not listening to the same piece. And it pales compared to the eight that hits him that foul. So, I mean, you've got two guys right there, 14 threes between them. I give Burton credit. And I give Billy Cummings credit because when you have two guys that are shooting like that, most importantly, get them in rhythm. And then I give those both of those players credit because they're moving to open areas and basically making themselves available. I call it getting into windows. I think Pitt's going to go a little zone right here. No one coming out of the timeout. That up their back man. And Steve Forbes is going to run some type of play coming out of this timeout. A five-point game, three and a half to go. Appleby around the corner. Burton sticks with him. Appleby bounces for a cutting Williamson. Back out, Carr. Off the shot fake. No. Bradford battles on the boards. Takes a tumble, and we've got a held ball. The arrow keeps it at this end of the floor with Wake Force. Yeah, really good job right there. Staying home. Wide. Like, we'll see what happens right there. Pitt decided the ball goes into the post. We're going to stay home. We're going to defend the three-point line. Great job of contest. You've got to finish it with a rebound. Dangerous situation underneath that bounce. We know that Wake Forest has been absolutely terrific in terms of their execution. Watch Carr and then watch a curl of Williamson. There it is. Williamson trapped along the sideline. Got it free to Appleby. A ball screen for Appleby. Dumps it off. Bradford lost it. Poked away. Bradford got it back underneath. And what do we have? Did they call a foul? They do against Penn. Shoot. A Nike Sabandi battling for the ball against Davion Bradford. One and one for Davion Bradford. 54% for his career. And he misses on the first. He has really struggled with free throws this season in particular. 32% coming in. I would expect Elliott or Burton going downhill or something for Henson. There you go. Burton bumps Bradford. Foul is on the floor. Meanwhile, Demari Monsanto picked up his fourth foul at the 1351 mark, and he is still seated on the Wake Forest bench. Burton scanning, and now he backs it out with Hildreth on it. Off the screen from Federico. Sabandi directing around the screen. Sabandi. Can't hit. Offensive rebound and put back Federico. Federico out just two offensive rebounds again. Good job of getting to the offensive glass. Watch how active he is defensively. Oh man, that's a big time shot. Tough shot. Tyree Appleby for three. Trims it to four. And 2-10 to go still. In how good has this one been? Here in Pittsburgh, Wake Forest and Pitt, huge game. Couple of top six teams in the ACC. And watch right here. You get a little shot right there. Watch Federico right in the middle of the floor. No one cuts him out. You don't cut him out. He's going to get to the offense glass on the other end. This is just a big time step back. And a great job of Appleby on that step back, getting behind the ball, getting himself on balance, and knocking down a big time shot. He's about a 35% three point shooter. You see, he had been one for seven from three in this game. Now Wake's got it down to four as we tick under two to go. Ball screen back to watch, watch Elliott right there. Burton. Oh, spins it out. Good clear out from Hildreth. Drawing a foul on Federico. And 
you're just joining us down the stretch. Maybe you've been locked in on the Big East earlier tonight. They've had a good one going on there. This is a big game for both these teams. Whoa, for Wake Forest looking for a second quad one win. For Pitt, quad two here at home. You know what's right around the corner? February. Jeez. And when February comes, you need to start racking. The two things you got to do, you got to get wins against the field, and you can't have bad losses. This is an opportunity for both of these teams. They continue to play well to get a quality win. Hildreth misses on the front end, 78%. They're not um, the bonus yet. I believe Tyree Appleby might have just got a warning as well from Roger Ayers for his reaction after he got tagged with his third foul. And that's good fishing. And Roger Ayers, I, got, I talk to say all the time, home run road, I'll take out Roger Ayers every single night. Emotional play, disappointed. Great officiating by Roger Ayers. Not overreacting, understanding the emotion of the game and how hard these guys are playing. Free, throw, free throws the rest of the way on both sides. Pit by four with the ball under 90 seconds to go. Burton. Back out, Henson. Henson drives and lobs it too tall for Federico. Man, you would think that Henson would have just pulled up. And that, that would have been his first two point shot at that, but pulled up and knocked it down. Good job already, right Henson. Good drive. Got himself on balance. Got to throw that to the inside of the rim. You, when you make that lob pass, it's at the right side of the floor. Just throw it to the inside of the right side of the, of the rim, and that's a dunk. One ten to go. Appleby taking Sabandi off the bounce. Appleby throws it up, drew a foul on Nike Sabandi. He draws a ton of fouls. Larry Appleby has a good job of probing, using his dribble, and then pivoting to create angles. I told you, two of the top six in the ACC. Let me ask you here. Two of the top six, two teams that are trying to build their resume, enhance their resume, but you look at the standings. Raise your hand if you had Clemson at 9-1. Right. You know what I mean? And then Duke and North Carolina. Duke, really, really tough loss the other night. Uh, a little bit of controversial call at the end of the game. Greek Whitehead going out. You know, people are talking about Duke. They just haven't been healthy to develop a chemistry that you need a substitution pattern to find roles. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with them moving forward. Right now, this next minute of the game is going to be really interesting. Can't settle if you're pit. You got to play downhill, and you're in the bonus. Do not settle. Burton summons the ball screen. Now driving on Bradford, falling away, no. And ripped down by Hildred. And he draws a foul on Federico coming up the floor. And these fans are not happy with that, that one. A K Mike, that's a KG veteran European player. He's bad played professionally in Europe. He's played professionally overseas. And that was just a smart veteran play of basically cutting the defender off and then playing through the play. You know who did that? Another great ACC player, Chris Corciani, when he was at NC State. He was unbelievable at it. Hildreth has missed two in a row in the double bonus right now, and he's missed his last two. Hildreth misses both. Offensive rebound, Appleby. And it's coming back to Pitt as Appleby fell out of bounds. Great job, Appleby. Look at the right-hand side of the screen. No block out by Hinson whatsoever. I don't have a call there. I think it's, I mean, unbelievable. Hinson doesn't even step across at all. We can show that block out again. That ball goes up on a free throw line. You got to step across. I don't care who's next to you. Coming on this timeout, you know, Right now, Jeff Capel, interesting. Nelly Cummings has been out of this game for a while. Does he bring Cummings back to compliment Burton? Obviously, you want Elliott on the floor. You want Hinson on the floor. Both of those guys have been great. I still think you've got 25 seconds on the clock. You've got to make a play downhill. If you can get to the rim, get to the rim. If you can draw a foul, draw a foul. If you cannot, all right, that's when you kick out for a step in three. But don't be surprised if 
Steve Forbes doesn't change defenses. Two point game, 31 seconds left in what has been an absolute battle here at the P. The game in which Pitt has led by as many as 15. That was late in the first half. Wake has battled back despite all the shot making from Pitt, knocking down a program record 18 triples. Yeah, and Wake's gotten back by turning Pitt over with the 1 3 1 defense by getting the ball into the paint, by attacking the basket, and some timely three-point shooting. Now, interesting to see, Monsanto is still on the bench. Big lineup coming out of Pitt. Now, you've got Bradford and Carr. I would think they're gonna put Bradford in some type of ball screen. You put Bradford in the ball screen, you can't switch it. Burton or whomever can go at him and maybe get, and get, get uh, create a foul, a scoring opportunity, or create a get foul. Cummings back in the game. So interesting. Cummings, Hinson, Burton, and Elliott, they downsized, basically eliminating the five. Right now, Hinson is the five, uh, which is creating a matchup problem right now at the five spot. Yeah, this is a great opportunity to put Hinson and Burton in a ball screen. Five and a half second difference. Game and shot clock. Pitt with the ball up by two. Jamarius Burton has been the leader all season for Pitt. Off the Henson screen. Burton back out for Henson. Extra pass. And Cummings doesn't get it off. It's a shot clock violation. And Pitt doesn't even attempt a shot. Wow. Got exactly what they wanted. Hinson, they went a little late. Hinson in a ball screen. They get Hinson, that's a three that he's made all night. Makes the extra pass. And then all of a sudden, you've got to unsee the clock. Understand how much time is left on the clock. At least get a shot on the rim. Unselfish play by Hinson. Steve Forbes takes his final timeout as Wake will try to tie or take the lead with 6.1 to go on the road. Ball's going to be an, ball's going to be an Appleby hand. They're going to try to get the ball to Appleby All right, on, on the move and then get a step up ball screen where you can get in the lane and, and spray that ball out. Watch right here. You've got to know how much time is on the clock. Here's the screen we said, Henson. Drag two, look at that, he drags two, which is exactly what you want to do with a ball screen. Made one more. Just got to understand the clock. A veteran team's got to see the clock. You've talked about sharing the ball and how key that's been for Pitt. But twice down the stretch, has Blake Hinson been a little bit too unselfish? Yeah, I mean, he had to pull up off, off the drive where he tried to get the ball to Federico, and then right there, I mean, look, you've, you've knocked down eight threes. You either let that thing rip or, again, Cummings needs to see that, see the clock. He's got a good window to step into it and knock that thing down. Like, you, like, you want your team to be unselfish. That was great execution. They went small. Wake Forest had a bigger lineup. They put their biggest player in a ball screen. That was Bradford. Great job. Great job as you saw that play. Burton. he drew two defenders. That's why you put someone in the ball screen, to make two defend. Henson maybe could have stepped in a little bit more on the catch. This is going to be, if, if I'm Pitt, I'm making it hard for Appleby to get the basketball. I'm denying him the ball. First and foremost, you got to get the ball in bounds. And now Jeff Capel will counter with a timeout after getting a look at what Wake Forest came out in. Remember with Wake Forest as well, already two times this season, they've had buzzer-beating heroics. Andrew Carr against Appalachian State and Tyree Appleby at the buzzer in overtime against Utah Valley. And Tyree Appleby, they're going to try to get him the ball. Now, the way they were lined up Wake Forest, I suspect they'll be off. They'll, they'll really make it hard for Appleby to catch the ball. That's a hard place to inbound the ball. It's a hard place to inbound the ball and catch it on the run because you're caught on the outside third of the floor. So, you know, I would think my gut feeling is Whoever's guarding Hildreth is going to be below Hildreth. Exactly, in a protect, trying to corral Appleby right here. You see right here, Burton right here. He's matched up to Hildreth. You're going to contain and keep the ball in front. Monsanto back in the game. Oh, I thought they'd keep him on the side of the board. There's the step up ball screen. Appleby for three. He's got it. Oh. No! It hangs on at home. Thought he had a good thing, Mike. Good luck. 
Look good indeed for Tyree Appleby. I really thought Pitt was going to try to force him to catch the ball on the sideline. He got to his left chair. He just rips it, gets to his left hand. Little step up screen right there. Created good separation. Look at Hildreth, too. That's a big time win for Pitt. That's a tough loss for Wake Forest. A high level game. Both coaches doing an incredible job. Got to make free throws down the stretch if you're Wake Forest, but basically the resiliency of Pitt to continue to keep on grinding. Really impressive. Big time win for Pitt. They knocked down 18 threes and win it for Seth Greenberg and our entire excellent crew behind the scenes. Mike Monaco saying so long. Louisville Boston College is coming up next.